I'm Mark Arnaldo, I'm filming from my game arcade in beautiful Bloomington, Indiana and here on that screen you see Ted Auspach, the designer of several excellent games that came out in the last couple of years such as One Night Werewolf and then the Daybreak expansion and other games of this kind. Uh, recently I talked to Ted about one of his new releases which is One Night Revolution, a uh, love affair between, the result of a of affair between the resistance and one night and then I, I learned that actually he has another game on Kickstarter right now and I'm the worst person that there is about Kickstarter like all my friends know that I'm not good at following what comes out or what's out there available I I had no idea that you had another game out and so thank you Ted for informing me and my viewers about your campaign so what is this game about and what's sure. what's a, what's the game so, brand new game uh, called One Night Ultimate Vampire. Ooh. Um, and so it's a prequel to One Night Ultimate Werewolf and Daybreak. Um, it's basically it takes place in the same village where you have these werewolves running around, but before that happens, the sun goes down and vampires come out. And of course those vampires, they're just as bloodthirsty as the werewolves, so the village has to figure out who they are and get them out of the town uh, before it's too late. Uh, it has similar mechanics to One Night Ultimate Werewolf, in that you've got everyone gets a roll card of some sort they're either on the village team or on the vampire team and there's an audio or there's an app that actually will play and it has the narration that tells you okay everyone close your eyes vampires open your eyes etc it does a bunch of things like that and then after the everyone does their night action everyone wakes up discusses who the vampires are there's a vote the vampires are either found and the village wins or nobody knows who the vampires are and the vampires win so that's, that's the similarities between um, Vampire and Werewolf. The difference is, though, there, there are all sorts of interesting things that are different about the two games. Uh, the one thing that's really different is that now, in addition to your roll card, you get something called a mark. Each player gets a mark of clarity to start with. Not just, that mark of clarity really means that your roll card is your roll card. Nothing's changed about it. Mm -hmm. However, a lot of those characters in the One Night Ultimate Vampire game can change your mark to something else. They can change your mark to a mark of the vampire, which means you've been bitten by a vampire and you're now on the vampire team. Oh, I see. Now, the cool thing about this is your roll card hasn't changed. So, let's say you were the seer from One Night Ultimate Werewolf and you get bitten by a vampire. Well, you're still a seer. You still get to wake up and look at someone's card or look at some cards in the center. But now, because you're on the vampire team, you have a different agenda and you're trying to get information for a different purpose because you're helping the vampire stay hidden. Um... All of the different roles can be you know, turned into uh, can be turned into a vampire. The ones mm. that come with that game, or if you combine them with the other game, you can even have vampire werewolves if you want to, which is kind of crazy, but it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got these marks. People can turn into a vampire. Um, you can get uh, diseased um, from this. The person who has got diseases, they give a mark to the player on their left or right, and then they, they get this awful disease. Uh, there's the mark of the assassin. The assassin's a third team that is trying to kill the person they give the mark of the assassin to. And of course, nobody can kill a person by themselves. They have to get the group to agree to kill one person. So this assassin's job is, look, this person looks really guilty. I think they're a vampire. Let's kill them. And of course, he doesn't care if they're a vampire or not. He just wants that person dead because then he wins. Um, and the village has to figure out, uh-oh, what's your motivation for this? Are you really the assassin or not? Of course, mm -hmm. the assassin will not tell them that because then they wouldn't believe him and they'd focus someplace else. And again, you can have a situation where the assassin is bitten by a vampire, and he's a vampire assassin. And he doesn't really care if that target dies now. He just wants to make sure he doesn't die because he's on the vampire team, and the vampires lose if one of them dies. Um, so it adds this whole other layer of uh, manipulation and treachery and, and lies, deceit to a One Night Ultimate Werewolf, which already had a lot going on for it that way. So if I understand correctly, if you become a vampire, then the objectives of the vampire override the objectives of the role that you previously yes. had. You become a 100% committed, committed to the cause of vampirism. <laughs> right? Totally. Which, you know, it makes sense. It's, and it's, that's the nice thing. If you watch majority of movies and TV shows that have vampires, once you're um, yeah. converted to a vampire, suddenly your priorities change. You're mm -hmm. no longer hunting those vampires. You're protecting the other vampires and yourself and making sure those people who used to be your friends stay away or you can eventually convert more of them into vampires. You yeah, know, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I just been re I just finished reading the the stay the strain trilogy came out a couple That's of years really ago. Good. Great book series. Don't watch the TV show if you can avoid it. I started watching it and like I'll stick to the TV show. Uh, the book 
book is so good and the TV show is so bad. It's, yeah, pretty I much. I watch the whole TV show because I love the book so much, but as I, I'm cringing watching it, uh, that's yeah. rough to watch. My, my feelings entirely. Uh, as for the game, do you think that it adds complexity to the game? Like, is it harder to play than, say, Werewolf? It's different. Mm -hmm. um, it does add another mechanism, but it's a really simple mechanism. Uh, one of the things that we do with, with all our games, we try to test games, especially when they're expansions or sequels, in this case a prequel, to an existing game. We test them with people who've never played any of the previous incarnations of that game. And so we did that with this game quite a bit. And we found out that there was no there was no issue for people just getting on board right away and playing it. You can start with One Night Ultimate Vampire. You don't need to have played Werewolf or Daybreak first. Mm -hmm. um, if anything, it's probably a little easier than Daybreak. Daybreak has some rules that are a little more convoluted that do some more deeper, more interesting things. Uh, this, this has a variety of rules, but overall I think it's probably on the same level as One Night Ultimate Werewolf or a smidge uh, more. Not enough for anyone to go, oh, this is hard mm -hmm. you know, in, in any way. And it is on Kickstarter right now? It is on Kickstarter right now through the end of August. Oh, through the end of August. So we still have oh, a couple of weeks, yes. A couple of weeks, yeah. Um, what are the stretch goals? I'm just curious. We have, we have awesome stretch More rolls, of course. We have um, all sorts of special things. Uh, some of the reward levels we have. This is pretty cool. This, since we're hard to see on camera here, this is a custom Oh, we can box. see it. Yeah, we can see uh, it pretty I'll nice. up here so you can take a look inside. Uh, where you can store, wow, it's really hard with the light here. But you can see, uh, oh, yeah, we can see pretty well. Your, uh, mm -hmm. Games, vampire, werewolf, etc., in this wooden box. We've got some card sleeves you can put over your nice cardboard tiles that come with the game. There's a, a vampire player mat. Oh, I really like the art on the vampire. I mean, I like the art on also the other games, but I really like it. It's simple and Cartoonish without being too cartoonish, you know, like a uh, humorous without being too cartoonish. Oh, yeah. We even had this very cool. This is a, an aluminum sign you can put uh -huh. it outside in your game room. That's basically a little warning sign here to help uh, people out. Um, you know, hopefully they have an elevator in their house. If they don't. I, do I uh, need that. You know, I need, I need that. Thing. A lot of different stuff on the different reward levels, a lot of stretch goals with different roles and enhancements to the app and a lot of other things uh, going on there. I need that sign for my office on campus. <laughs> when my students come to my office, they see that. It's, that's a good <laughs> so warning. I love that. Right there to jump on the Kickstarter. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go and have a look right now. <laughs> thank you so much, Dad. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank and you. thank you for telling us about your new project. Bye. Thanks.